Today we're going to work with the newest feature available in Lightroom Classic. In the recently released version 13.3, Lightroom Classic added this new feature called Generative Remove. It uses AI technology to remove unwanted portions of your images without having to go into Photoshop. While it works fantastic on some images, the results of other images can be downright scary. Let me show you what makes this new feature great and what makes it not so great. Generative Remove in Lightroom Classic coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheid, and today we're going to talk about the newest feature inside of Lightroom Classic, and that's Generative Fill. And this has been inside of uh, Photoshop for a little while now, and they actually call it Generative Fill inside of Photoshop, but in Lightroom Classic, they call it Generative Remove. And in the dialog box, you're going to see it's Generative AI. So let's go ahead and take a look, see how it works. So we come into an image here. It works on any kind of image, JPEG, your iPhone images. It also works on your regular raw images as well. So we grab this image, which is a stock image, which I got from Envato Elements, which is a really great place to get your stock images. I'm really pleased with that. And this is, I'll leave a link down below if you want to go get belong to the stock. It's really great to have stock images handy for, especially for instruction, but it's also really great if you're trying to work on things, you're trying to make composites, you can go there and you can find an image that fits. So they're not sponsors, by the way. I just use it and like it. And to me, it's worth telling people about. So inside here, we've got an image of a trash can and let's say we want to remove it. So we come over here to our traditional remove tool and we come over here and we see that we have our three choices still. We have the, the Band-Aid tool, the stamp tool. We've talked about this in other videos and then our remove tool. And now we have this generative AI down here. So this is early access. So it is beta. And so we're, it, it's, it's working through some of the bugs and it's not quite as, as a, uh, feature rich as Photoshop is, but it can do the trick. So what you do is you take this and you can either have a con object aware or not on clicked on. We're just going to leave it off for this one. And we see that we have our brush. And of course you can bring the brush larger or smaller with the bracket keys. You just want to bring your cursor around what it is you want to remove. And always remember to get the whole thing and also try to get the shadow as well because Lightroom might think, well, they, they might want to do something different here. So let's make sure we try to get the shadow. Now you see here, we did an okay job of getting around this trash can, but not complete. So let's go over here to see subtract. And now our brush, we'll make it a little bit smaller. We can start taking away from that little mask that we just made. Cause you don't want to remove anything you don't really need to. And you don't want to give Lightroom anything more that it needs to remove than what you should. So there we go. That's pretty good. That's going to work good for this. Now all you do is you hit apply. And then this dialog comes up and tells you, okay, it's going to take a little while. Let's go ahead and do this. It runs through. And look at that. Look at how well that removed. I think that's really impressive. It took that trash can out, replaced leaves where there once was nothing. And you also down here, if you look down the dialog box, these, these two sliders are for your brush. So you can make them larger or smaller here. And this is the opacity of that brush of if you want to just bring something back, you know, if you only want a, you know, a faded version of it, we're doing hundred percent today. And down here is the variations one through three. So if you click on this, you'll get a different version of how Lightroom decided to remove that trash can. So depending on what you think looks best, you know, version three, they all look pretty good. We'll just leave it on version three. And that looks really great. So being able to remove things simply and quickly inside of Lightroom with using AI to put in that information that was missing is really fantastic. So let's go in here. We'll try another image. And by the way, I'll put these images up on my freebie site at, at imagelight.com where you can go ahead and download them. I'll leave a link down below and you can download and try these yourself because you're going to find that on these images, not every image is going to work the same. So it's not going to do the same thing every time. And we'll get into that here in just a second. But let's say, for instance, we wanted to remove these out of focus leaves back here. So let's go up here and we'll remove the leaves. And let's go ahead, 
get a little aggressive here and we'll remove all of these leaves back here. And let's see what it does. Click apply. And of course, it takes a couple seconds. It's using the cloud to get information about your image and trying to reassemble something that's going to look decent for you. And so it has to take a little bit more time than you would. And you do need to be connected to the internet. Look at that. It did a pretty good job. Let's see what it looks like before. Those leaves are gone. It did leave some stems. So basically, Lightroom's saying, oh, he didn't want the leaves, but we still want the branches there. So it's pretty amazing what it can do. Let's, get, let's really just challenge it here. So on this one here, I thought, this is pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and see if we're going to get the same results. Because again, you don't get the same results every single time. Let's go ahead and we'll leave this on. I don't think object aware. So object aware, when you have that on, it tries to find what the object is and creates a mask from there. And I don't find that it actually works all the time the way I want it. So I just leave it off for this. So let's go ahead and create our mask around here. We'll just keep creating. What we want to do is we want to take the person out, but we don't want to take the fence out in this case. Let's go ahead and bring it down. And I find an easy way if you're doing this is to go ahead and make a complete mask, then come over to subtract, and then you can be a little more detailed. Like for instance, we want to keep the fence up here. We want to keep this bar going across. And I think we've got most of the guy selected. So let's go ahead and, and this is going to be a challenge for Lightroom to do this. So let's try it. We want to remove something on the other side of this fence, which would take us forever to do, even in Photoshop, to remove this, keep the fence, replace the fence with something else. Let's see how it does. Wow. See, that is impressive. Look at that. The fence is put in in the same kind of perspective as the fence that was shot. Now, no, it's not perfect. We got a little bit of arm left up here. But if you do, then what you want to do is you just want to do this again. So let's go ahead and bring this up here. And let's go ahead and apply that, do that a second time. Look at that. Two times and we've removed the guy, but the fence looks real. I think this is so impressive that Lightroom can do this so quickly and give us these kinds of results that would normally take us forever to do in some other way. However, as great as this is, there are a few situations where Lightroom, the generative AI feature of remove doesn't work great. Let me show you. I think it has to do with patterns behind the subject, but I'm not positive. So let's go ahead and take this person here. And let's say all we wanted was this brick wall. We're going to use it for something else. So let's go ahead and make a mask. We'll make a mask out of this. And just so you have some sort of perspective for what has improved in this program is let's go ahead and take, let's cancel that. Let's turn generative AI off. So this is just the old fashioned remove tool. Let's go ahead and bring this around again. And this will give you a good idea what it used to be able to do versus what it can do now. So we're gonna, we selected all of this and it's analyzing. Now it's gonna go in and remove her from this wall and look what we got pretty wavy wall, kind of a ghosty image. It's pretty weird. It's pretty strange. So let's go ahead and, and redo that. So we'll reset it. We'll put generative AI on and we'll go ahead and bring that around the subject. So for some reason, Lightroom thought it needed a box or something there. So of course we wanted it removed. We didn't want necessarily want to have a box there. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at another version. Oh, it's a different box, a mailbox. So when you, when you try to remove something here in Lightroom, particularly on a situation like this, where you've got, uh, you know, a pattern or something in the background, it tends to say, Oh, it probably wants something over there. So in this case, that didn't really work that well. 
So let's go ahead and refresh this and see if it'll give us something different. So that's kind of a nice tool here. If you don't like its results, it'll give this to you. So this is called this is called generative remove or, or generative AI, but I think that you know it's trying to fill and we're not necessarily wanting it to fill. What we're trying to do is just remove something completely from this wall. And you can see all of our options here are just to put some sort of a box or an ATM or something there that we're not really looking for. All right, let's make another mask. We're gonna just make sure that we're covering up the shadow because that might be a problem if we're not covering up the shadow. We cover all that. And then we're going to come over and we'll hit apply and we'll let uh, generative remove do its thing. We're going to try to remove this person from the wall. So we just have a plain wall when this is all said and done. And let's see what it does. Whoa. Oh, okay. It puts a strange little person with a strange little face there. Let's try a different version. Oh, that's even better. Look at that. A totally different person with a pretty odd looking face. You know, if we, if we zoom in on this. Uh, we can see, let's go ahead and zoom up and we'll take a look at the face. And again, AI of 2024 is creating just a face that thinks you might need. So let's try something a little more realistic. Now, here we've got a couple on the street. This person was walking next to them. We don't really want them in this. Let's go ahead and do object aware in case that makes a difference. And let's remove this subject here because that's not part of the group. And then we'll just hit apply. And we'll let Lightroom remove this person, put in the rest of the street and have, you know, the cars in the background. It'll look at all those pictures and remove them completely. Excellent job, right? So we've got the different versions that we can cycle through, whichever we think looks most realistic. And you can see down at the bottom, they extended the wall. So that looks pretty good. And that looks great. So let's reset this and we're gonna do this same image again. So let's go ahead and remove object aware and see if that makes a difference. So we're gonna remove this person. Let's go ahead and apply. And again, we're trying to make sure that this has a, more of a realistic type of a, of a shot to it. So we remove this person. Oh, look what it did. It put in a new person. In case we wanted a new person, let, let's try this again. We're trying to remove a person there. That's a little bit better. We'll put a couple guys in the background, but that's all right. I don't know what that is in the background there, but our options were to just remove and put in another person, which of course is odd, right? So we'll, we'll refresh that one more time. So you're not really sure exactly the results you're gonna get. If you don't like it, do it again, and maybe you'll find something that you like. What I don't, there, that's better. Even though they put a worker back there, I think that's better than having that person stuck in there. So it's really strange as to where Lightroom makes a decision as to why it's going to work or why it's not. So like in this case here, if we wanted to remove one person out of this couple, let's go ahead and remove this person here. Apply. And see, this looks, this to me looks as confusing as the last image. I mean, it looks difficult, but look what it did. It removed that, removed it perfectly. Fantastic job. You can see before and after. It did a great job, right? So what's the difference between removing a person here where we're trying to, you know, remove it completely or they put in a person, but this one worked out great. So who knows why Lightroom makes these decisions. And it, it is early access, this is a beta version. So there are gonna be changes, but I think that the patterns like this, here's another example here of patterns that if you cycle around, make our mask around. But again, if we've got a pattern in the background, I think it kind of confuses Lightroom a little bit. It says, hey, they must want something else. They can't just want this removed. They're gonna to need to put something else in there. So let's fine tune this a little bit. And we, we went a little too deep over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it back in. And so that's pretty simple mask work, right? To be able to do the masking, however we wanna do the masking. And let's go ahead and hit apply. 
So this isn't really taking a lot of time. This is, this is going pretty quick. It's going up to the cloud, analyzing it, and it decides to put in a little green sign of some sort. Let, let's change that. Oh, how about a little mirror or something and a little shadow that goes underneath it? Or a strange little stick. So Lightroom for this system works really good. You can see when we went through here, we did an amazing job, an unbelievable job on this. But as we got through some other images, it started adding strange things in the background and strange things where you were putting stuff in. So it doesn't work all the time. So it's not the miracle. While AI is good, and this is beginning stages, it doesn't really know exactly what you want, right? It doesn't know inside, it can't see inside your brain as to what you're looking for. So AI is a helpful tool, no doubt, and it's gonna get better. But right now, it's maybe not something that we can depend really heavily on, but it's worth trying. And maybe it's going to fix that one simple thing. Remember that guy in the fence? What an awesome job it did with that. But this gets a little squirrely. All right. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And then hit the little bell to remind it of the next video that I come out with. And also hit that little like button if you can. That'd be great. Any questions, you can always leave them in the comments. I answer all my comments personally. So I'll get back to you that way. Or if you'd like to, you can get a hold of me via email. Terry at imagelight.com. And I'll answer your questions that way. Thanks for watching. See you next time.